Hello everyone, let's look at this interesting limit problem here. We have x squared times sine of L1 of x. And it's important to pay attention to the detail right here that this is not sine times L1 of x, this is actually sine of L1 of x. And the L1 of x is inside the sine function. And so for this one, um, just like usual, we are going to just analyze the form for this problem here. And what really happened is that we can just, just try to plug in the zero in there and do a direct substitution. And then we can analyze the form of the limit and see what strategy that we can take for to find this limit. And so what happens is that we are going to just write down the form of the limit problem here. That's some quantity square, right? Some stuff square and then times sine of ln of something. Okay, so what are those things? What are those things? We are going to put in the zero in here. So zero plus and then also the zero plus in here. Okay, now um, by just looking at this form, it may suggest us that the limit is equal to zero because of, there was a zero here and you're squaring it and then you are still going to get a small number and then times some stuff. And now the problem comes from the L1 of zero to, um, it comes from L1, um, something that's close to zero and it's on the right side of the zero, it's approaching zero from the right. And this would actually give us what? This, as you can see, it would give us, um, as you can see, this quantity here is actually approaching, I don't know why I just keep writing it. So this quantity is approaching like the infinity. And so what are we having here? We are having sine of, like the infinity. So you look at this form and you know what the curve of the sign is, right? You know that it will just keep oscillating between like the one and one. And so when you have like the infinity here, it will just never stop, right? It will just go into the far left. And what happened is that you are um, not going to stop at a single value. It's not going to be stopping at a finite single value. And yeah, so the limit does not exist in this one. And yet yeah, this comes to a problem. So can we just say that, okay, so the limit is zero because zero um, or maybe a really small number times anything is, is zero. We cannot really say that here. The reason is, um, is that because of this limit does not exist. Yeah, so just like in general, many people will argue that if you just write, break down the limit problem as using the limit law, and then so we get the limit of x score and then we get the limit of the sine function. And then you may say, okay, so that's zero. That's what we were just looking at when we were um, looking at the form by plugging the zero in there. So even though this limit exists, but because this limit does not exist, we cannot really uh, use the limit law here. And so this cannot be applied, right? So it's here. that's why it can be a problem. So we cannot really do this. Yeah, so that's not good, right? Okay, so we got to take a different approach for doing this problem. And so the way that we are going to do it is that we are going to use the squeeze theorem to find this limit. Okay, so how does that work? And what the theorem is saying is that if you have a function and if you know the lower bound, and the upper bound of that function, and what happened is that if you take the limit of the upper bound, and the lower bound, and they both are equal, both limits exist, and they are equal to the same number, then what happens? Then the limit of the middle function, the, the function that we were looking at, will also be having the same limit. And so, um, by using the squeeze theorem, then we can actually show that this limit will be equal to zero. So how do we do that? First, we need to establish a um, lower bound and the upper bound for our function here. And we cannot just do that by just considering the whole function. What we can do is that we know there is a lower bound and the upper bound for the sine function. What is that? That's actually just the, uh, yeah. It's actually just the leg of the one at one. All we need to do is to use the range. We look at the range, we look at the upper bound and the lower bound for the range are the two endpoints of the range. So the upper bound for the sine function is one and then the lower bound for the sine function is leg of the one. Okay. 
Now, you may say, that's not even the same function as the function that we're looking at here. Of course not, right? We are going to do manipulate this middle function right here so that it will be the same function as our problem. So what can we do here? All we need to do is to multiply every part of this three part inequality by x squared. So if you multiply everything by x squared, okay, so I'm going to multiply by x squared right here, then see what's going on here. It's that our middle function will now look exactly like our problem, okay? And then now since x squared is non-negative, then we can simply just multiply the one by the x squared without changing the direction of the inequality symbols. Okay, so we are going to get one times x squared, right? So we are going to get x squared. And then what about the other side? The other side, the left side is the same thing here. We are going to multiply the negative one by the x squared, then we are going to get negative x squared. Okay, now so we have established a lower bound and an upper bound for our function. And the next step is to take the limit of the lower bound and the upper bound. Yeah, so let's do that here. So the limit for the lower bound as x approaching zero from the right. Yeah, so let's look at our lower bound here. That's, yeah, so that can be found easily by direct substitution. So we are going to get zero here. And so the answer is zero for the lower bound. And then what about the upper bound? The upper bound is the same situation. It's a similar situation. And so the limit of x squared is actually also equal to zero. And so by the squeeze theorem, then what can we say? By the squeeze theorem, of course, Right, we have x squared and then times sine of L1 of x is also equal to zero because the limit for the upper bound and the upper bound are both zero. So the middle function will also be approaching zero. Okay, so that's how we use the squeeze theorem to, to find this limit. Okay, so I'll continue to do more uh, squeeze theorem problem next time. And if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. See you next time.